Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to go over how to use collections in Payload CMS. But before we get started, don't forget to check and make sure you're subscribed to my channel and hit the bell to make sure you get notified every time I release a new video. Now let's dive in. A collection is a group of documents that share a common structure. You can have as many collections as you need for a project and each collection you create will take up its own space in your admin dashboard. Each document you create is stored in your database using the fields you define. You can learn more about what fields are available to you by watching my videos on data, presentational, and relationship fields linked in the description below. What you define in each collection automatically generates local, REST, and GraphQL API for you to query your database to render data on your front end. These APIs are represented as JSON, in the API window in each of your individual collection items view. We covered how to add collections to your payload config file in my step-by-step -step guide to configuring payload CMS config settings video. But it's best practice to create your collections in a separate file and then import them into your config. So how do you define a collection? Well, over here we have our collections directory which was created for us when we made this blank payload app but it's always best practice to have a separate folder in your source directory called collections. You don't have to do it this way, but it just makes things so much easier to organize. Now what we're going to do is create a new directory for our posts collection. And in that post directory, we're gonna have a new TypeScript file that we're gonna call config. There are a few things you need to do to get your collection going. First, you need to import the collection config from payload. So I've done that there. This lets you stay within the bounds of what Payload CMS expects you to provide when creating a collection. Next, you'll export a const called the name of the file, which we will call post, and assign collection config to it and set it equal to an object that contains a slug and array of fields. So we'll do slug and call it post, and then fields will open an empty array. The slug can be whatever you want it to be, but it's recommended that you set it to be the name of the collection in order to prevent confusion to yourself and to others. You can also include as many fields as you'd like to in your collection, as long as they stay within the fields array. There are no required fields, but fields are required to create a collection. So feel free to experiment with different fields to build your own collection. But for a blog, we might include something like a title. So we'll do a new field name title type text and then we'll include a slug which will be a name slug and type text and underneath that we'll have one more that we'll call name content which will be type rich text. From there, you can go to your payload configuration file and import your newly created collection to your collections option. So if I go over here, you'll see in our previous examples, I had this collection called posts already. So we're just going to delete all of this configuration option and use our post collection. So now if we go to our post collection, we can see all of our old blogs, but with all the information deleted because we have new fields. So now we see we have a title, a slug, and some content. As I mentioned, the slug and fields options are required, but you have some additional options available to you when creating a collection. Some common ones include access, admin, auth, default sort, hooks, labels, upload, and default populate. So we'll start with admin. Collections, just like fields, have many ways to configure your collection at the admin level. There are several admin options you'll use when creating collections. And some common ones include group, use as title, and description. So starting with group, we're gonna go back over to our post config, and we will, at the top level, above our fields, include our admin. And then assign that to an empty object, and we'll use group to start. So, if we look back at our collections here, this is unlabeled. We have collections and we have globals. So now if we go to admin and set group, we'll just say post because that's what it's recommending. We'll see a new section created called posts. And of course this is case sensitive. So if I change that to capital P posts, we'll see post is now sorted into its own group. 
So you can use this, for example, if you have a category or a topic collection. You could even include your user section somewhere else. And you could group all of these together in a meta group to keep them organized. The use as title option is used to set what you want your title to be set as for the document throughout the admin panel. This includes any relationship field you have as well. This must be a top level field so it cannot be based on anything within a group, array, or anything that takes the field down a level. You also can't use any field that is set as a virtual field as a title because no value is saved in the database. If nothing is defined, as we see here in posts, the ID will be used. So if we want to change that, we can just add use as title, and then we can type in title here. And we see that there's no title for all of these, but blog one, the title was taken as the title of the blog post. The description option is used to set a text description under the collection label. You can use this space to describe what the collection is about to give editors or yourself more information about the collection. You can also use admin.components.description to render a React component, but we'll cover those in a separate video. So if we're just going to add a text description, we can do this is a blog collection. And when we do that, it should show up here right at the top of our post collection. Next is access. You can set the access option to provide fine-tuned control over who can access this collection. You have the option to include read, update, create, and delete. All of these options accept a function returning a Boolean. So we can just select all of these and we are going to set them all to true, which means that anybody can read, create, update, or delete anything that is in the post collection. We'll dive deeper into access controls in a later video, but for now we'll just set all of these but delete to true. The next option is auth. You can use the auth option to select the collection for authentication. For example, our users collection is our authentication collection. And we can see here that auth is set to true. This field doesn't need much more explanation than that as it can only be true or false and is false by default. Next up is the default sort option, which is used to set how you want to sort your collection items in the list view. This again needs to be a top level field, so it can't be a field in a group or any other kind of field that takes the field down a level. This sorts ascending by default. If you'd like to sort by descending, you can start this option with a minus symbol to sort in descending order. If you use an array of strings, you can sort by multiple fields with the first array item being sorted first. So let's take a look at that and have our default sort and we will use an array of strings and we'll start with title. So if I save this, we'll now sort by title with all of these not really having a title. We can come in and just add a title to at least one of them and go back to our post and we can see that it is sorting by ascending order from one to two. And if we wanted to do descending order, we could just do minus title and it should start from blog two and go down to blog one. Adding in blog five means that we have three blogs in descending order. To show you how our default sort can work, we're going to include another field, which we'll call name number and it'll be type of number. And then we're going to set each of these blog posts to have a number. So we'll say that this one is five, and we'll say all of them are five. So now when we sort these by number, and we'll do it descending, 3000 is obviously bigger than five, and then we see two more five blogs. Now, if we then wanted to sort first by number, then by descending title, we can do that which will then move the titles around so that it's sorted first by number and then by title descending. Next up is labels. If you want to use a different name for your collection than your slug, you can set this by using the label option. A great use case for this is with our post example. So if we want to query this collection using our post slug, but we want to call these blogs in your admin dashboard, we can do that by setting the label option to an object with a plural and singular option. So we'll create a labels option and have it assigned to an object, which will have a singular and a plural. And the plural will be blog posts. 
and the singular will be just blog post. So now if I save this, we'll see that our collection has updated to blog posts and we can see it even here. So these are case sensitive, so be sure that you type these in exactly like you want to see them in the dashboard. If you want your collection to support file uploads, you'll need to include either upload true or set upload with an object with some more options. This is extremely flexible and can be used to convert files on upload, restrict accepted MIME types, and allows you to handle how thumbnails are presented. So let's take a look deeper into our upload options. So over in our payload project, we're gonna to go to our media collection and here we see upload is set to true. If we wanna have a bit more control than that, we can just open up an empty object and we'll start with format options. When you upload files, you can use format options to automatically convert files into other formats. If you want all of your images to be converted to WebP, for example, you can do that by including format options, format. And when you do this, you can type in WebP and it'll convert anything that you upload to WebP by default. For MIME types, you can set the MIME types option by typing in MIME types and specifying what types of documents your upload field allows. This expects an array of strings that acts as a whitelist of available types. For example, if you want to include only images, you can use image slash wildcard. So we're going to open up this array and do image slash wildcard, which will then allow you to upload any type of image, whether it's WebP, PNG, SVG, or anything like that. But if you only want WP and PNG images to be allowed, you can change this to image slash PNG or image slash WP. So now this will accept only PNGs and WebPs, but either way, it'll be converted to a WebP image upon upload. You can look up lists of available MIME types to build out exactly what you want your upload field to accept. This is not limited to images either. You can also set restrictions to allow PDFs or other documents, all by just setting what MIME types to accept. You can also set the admin thumbnail to determine how images are shown as thumbnails in the admin dashboard. You can either use a string to tell your collection how to handle the thumbnail, or you can set it as a function. When you use a string, you can use something like small. So we'll add our admin thumbnail, and we can just do small. And now this will only work if you have an image sizes array with a name of small. And so we'll just create that real quick, where I believe we can just do a width. It doesn't really matter. So now your admin thumbnail will be this width and height because it is looking up this name. Or as I prefer, you can set the thumbnail using a function which takes a document as an argument. You can then use your own media bucket and programmatically create a path to the file to then be used in your admin dashboard. So what that looks like is we have a document arrow function that then returns a string, which just as an example, will be google.com and we can just do path to file and then use doc file name. So what this is doing is it's reviewing the document, which in this case is a media file, and it's going to take the file name and apply it to the end of the string of whatever file path you're using. We don't have a media bucket set up right now, so just using google.com path to file and file name is not going to return anything for us, but using small should. So we'll turn this back to small and save, and since we don't have any media, we won't see anything here. So now to see some of these things in action, we're going to create new media and we're going to select a file. And we can see here that I have some file types that are not accepted in our field. That's because I'm only accepting PNG and WP. So I can't click on the MP4, the JPEG or the PNG. But if I wanted to accept JPEG, I could do that. And now that I've added image slash JPEG, I can go to select a file and I see the JPEG files are now accepted. But I'm gonna select this PNG file and hit open and then add some alt text and save. And now we saw that it was PNG and now it's WebP. So this automatically converted that PNG file to WP for me. The last option we'll go over for collections right now is the default populate collection configuration option, 
which is incredibly helpful when you want to reduce how much JSON you're sending from relationship and upload fields. Instead of sending the entire document every time you query it, you can select a few fields to be used on the front end using default populate. For example, say you only want to send the slug and name field from our users collection. So if we go over to our users collection, we'll set default populate and we'll include an empty object which will include slug as true, and then name as true. So we've included slug and name as true, but I don't see slug and name here. So we're going to add those real quick, where we'll just do name is slug, type is text, and we'll do name is name, type is text. So now we'll go over to our users and we'll add a slug, which will just be my first name. And then we can see the slug and the name there. And so we have default populate being set to true. And so let's go over to our post and we'll add a relationship field, which is gonna be our users type relationship relation to users and go over to our posts we'll do blog 5 and we can select myself as the user and hit save so now if i open up the api i can see that my user is only sending in name and slug even though it has more fields like rich text and active and the email field. So this will ensure that only these fields are populated when using that relationship with another collection. If you want to populate more than these fields in some cases, you can use populate in the local API to show these fields. Using these options should help you optimize how much data you're sending. Collections are the structure of your site. You'll typically have collections for pages, posts, media, and much more. When creating a collection, be sure to have the final design in mind so you know what fields and options you need in order to create your final project. We'll go in more detail with some of these concepts in later videos, so check to make sure you're subscribed to my channel and sign up for notifications to ensure that you are always up to date on the content I'm putting out around Payload CMS and more. If this was helpful for you, please like and share this content with others. I'll see you on the next one.